Hey, no worries though, right? Keeps getting better and better, more sophisticated, and they're just letting us know. So, uh, yeah, but I love the comments. You know, this is a stupid robot. I'll shoot him with my shotgun, so. Surgical robot Da Vinci scrutinized by FDA after deaths of other surgical nightmares. The high-tech robot is being used in surgeries for prostates, gallbladders, and wounds, but reports of problems have emerged ranging from sliced blood vessels to patients being hit in the face by the robotic arm. They say the advantages of the Da Vinci robot include allowing them to operate sitting down using small robotic hands with no tremor. It says the FDA is looking to problems and deaths that may be linked with robotic surgery. It says here that it's performed nearly 400,000 surgeries nationwide last year, triple the number just four years earlier. There's been some uh, disturbing freak accidents. A robotic hand that would, wouldn't let go of tissue grasped during surgery and a robotic arm hitting a patient in the face as she lay on the operating table. Some doctors say that uh, con they're concerned that the wow factor and heavy marketing have boosted use. They argue that there's not enough robust research showing that robotic surgery is at least as good or better than conventional surgeries. And this, of course, is their website. They got a nice little sun, uh, little sun sign there. It, they call it intuitive surgical, intuitive. We're all doomed. DARPA develops cheap robot hand that can use tools from April 2nd. Modern day robotics has already advanced to the point where we can create robot limbs sophisticated enough to be attached to machines and perform tasks efficiently enough to outpace humans in certain areas. A problem with these limbs, though, is that they, they're just too expensive and not precise enough to outpace humans across the board. However, DARPA has developed a cheap robotic hand that can almost match human performance and dexterous activities like changing a tire. So it's humanity's greatest advantage over other forms of life, I guess they're talking about machines, are our abilities to use tools. So what happens when DARPA develops a robot hand so precise that it's able to use a tool made for human use? So the goal of the project was uh, to build a low-cost limb that would lead to more advanced prosthetics for those who have lost their limbs. It says perhaps frighteningly, DARPA, DARPA stated that the robot in the above video is actually an old model, and it was back before the robot could properly thread a nut onto the bolt. Remember, I covered this article already from the 26th of March. The robot reality service jobs are the next to go. So if you meet the, late, la, or the latest humanoid robot from Rethink Robotics, you should get comfortable with them because you'll likely be seeing more of them. Last fall, they received an overwhelming response from the manufacturing industry, selling out their production capacity through April. He's cheap to buy, easy to train, and can safely work side by side with humans. He's just what factories need to make their assembly lines more efficient. U.S. unemployment rate actually stands at 14.3%, probably even higher than that, but the U.S. nationwide unemployment rate actually stands at 14.3% and not the reported 76 Forbes magazine reported on Monday that the true unemployment number must include discouraged workers, the marginally employed, and the workforce most impacted by the 2008 economic um, wealth consolidation operation. More than 101 million working-age Americans do not have a job. So the jobs recovery is a complete and tech, or total myth. So you go down here, it says that if things were getting better, there would not be more than 101 million working age Americans without a job. During the last recession, the percentage of working age Americans with a job fell dramatically. And since then, we have not seen that number bounce back at all. In fact, this is the very first time in the post-World War II era that we have not seen the employment population ratio bounce back after a recession at this point, the employment population ratio has been under 60% for 49 months in a row. There's a little chart. You can go in there and check it out. And here's the percentages. March, starting off at, um, since the, well, let's just go with this. Since the end of 2009, the employment population ratio has been remarkably steady. So in 2008, it was 62%, and in March, it's 58%. It's uh, the population to those that are employed ratio. That's what it is. Moving on, uh, why U.S. jobs market is going to get a lot worse from April 8th, CNBC. Weak U.S. jobs data on Friday confirmed the worst trading week this year for European and U.S. stocks. Now analysts are warning that investors should brace for further trouble ahead of fiscal tightening begins to take its toll. Friday's jobs report came in well below expectations.
I love how they say this, raising concerns that the recovery in the world's largest economy is weakening. The participation rate in March was at a lowest rate since 1979. Then they start giving all these uh, fake numbers of seven-something. Jim Rogers says, I suspect they'll take the pension plans next. I, for one, am worried, and I'm taking preparations. So it goes on here, and it says that in the interview, he shared thoughts on what governments around the world will be taking next and what he's doing right now to protect his personal bank accounts following the Cyprus collapse. It says it's been condoned by the IMF, the European Union, and everybody else in sight that a government indeed can take assets. We all know that they can tax us, but this is the first time that I'm aware of that they can gone in and taken bank accounts. They took people's gold in uh, the United States in 1930s, but never heard of them taking bank accounts, and now they're doing it. So be careful because now they can take your bank account under this precedent. It says 401ks, IRAs, pension plans, which government knows about, may be next. The rationale would be, well, most people haven't been doing well in their IRAs and pension plans for the past several years, so we're going to help you. We're going to take your pension plan and give you a government bond so that you have guaranteed return. We have U.S. government to decide how much is enough for your retirement. It says, welcome to the new U.S. socialism. Always has the same predictable process. Once the government collectivizes the sector, then uh, the politicos and bureaucrats get to work on improving the system in a private enterprise that mean offering more to your customers for a cheaper price, but in government, it is always the opposite, finding ways to reduce benefits for their customers. This is the same has been happening since the U.S. government has had a multi-decade long monopoly on retirement savings, i.e. IRAs. Since they get to make the rules, they get to decide on how much is enough for your retirement, and that is exactly what will be happening next week when Obama will be releasing his budget plan, which will limit how much a wealthy individual can keep in those tax reducing IRA plans and other retirement counts. Then you have the Fed's fear scale. Holdings of cold hard cash at record. 1969 notes greater than $100 bills, including the cool $10,000 note that would still pay for a lot of things, were retired due to declining demand. Prematurely, it turns out, because demand for cold hard cash, despite plummeting use of it for transactions, has surged. The reason is fear. Then you have this, Bitcoin really is an ex existential threat to the modern liberal state. So its total value in circulation was $1.4 billion as of this week. It's equivalent to currency stock of a small nation, somewhere between Iceland and Uruguay. Just one thousandth of a total value of U.S. dollars in circulation. So electronic payments are new, but Bitcoin's only innovations are its uh, status as an independent currency and its decentralized network design. If widely adopted, cryptocurrencies would cripple government in three central functions, taxation, police, and macroeconomic stabilization. This is exactly what Bitcoin's biggest fans are hoping for. Now, I'm not bashing or condoning it. I don't know what to make of it. I just think when things like that actually make it to the surface, I wonder if it's supposed to be there. Uh, Dutch in bank suffers technical glitch. Clients report negative balances. This is from the 3rd of April. Another Dutch bank... Uh, Rabobank is apparently having technical issues. And we have RBC replaces Canadian staff with foreign workers. They axed employees. And it goes on and it says that dozens of employees at Canada's largest bank are losing their jobs to temporary foreign workers who are in Canada to take over the work of their department. They're being brought in from India. The employees affected by the move says the new people are in our offices and we are training them to do our jobs. That adds insult to injury. And uh, you can go in there and check it out. I'm going to keep moving for time purposes. Uh, Cypriot chaos assists EU centralization. The Daily Bell believes that members of the EU elite may be purposely leveraging the crisis to push for a centralized European banking system to cement the political framework of an EU super, super state. So I've mentioned this before. Most of you are already aware that in all these financial crises, uh, quote, financial crises, um, where they steal a lot of money and uh, basically taxpayers foot the bill, uh, whatever the money laundering skill is, so they can steal more, and money launder even more. Uh, they, uh, they also get what? They are able to integrate and consolidate um, uh, their power. And that's, you know, so it makes sense. It's just one of the different facets of this whole Cyprus uh, debacle thing. Uh, political scandals and austerity, an explosive mix in Europe. 
So a wave of corrosive political scandals at a time of economic woes is exasperating the outrage of European citizens who are channeling resentment into street protests or at the polls. Italy, Spain, and Greece have all been hit by fraud and graft cases allegedly involving top brass. So France joined the ranks of scandal-hit nations this week after its former budget minister was charged with tax fraud. They say everything is coming together to reinforce populist theories, the theory that they're all rotten, says a researcher at the Paris Bank Iris think tank. Hmm. So, it says in French, outrage over budget minister scandals has erupted into popular protests as well. And going back to some Big Brother news, documents show Homeland Security spies on peaceful protesters from the 3rd of April. You've probably seen some of this news already. But it says here, doubts over the DHS surveillance are nothing new, especially after the Senate committee found fusion centers were breaching civil liberties. Now documents show that agency spies on peaceful demonstrations as a matter of policy. So it says here that the documents acquired by Partnership for Civil Justice Fund to the Freedom of Information Act provide concrete evidence that the routine DHS surveillance of peaceful demonstrations are taking place. They include spying on protests such as the Occupy Movement, other free speech protests, including fracking, where I've talked about before how they're treated as insurgents or terrorists. Example in preparation for planned protests in New York City on October 2011, DHS showed coordination between federal and local authorities to use New York City's permitting scheme to frustrate, obstruct, or stop free speech activities. If you walk 1.4 miles in London, you'll take photos of 140 plus CCTV cameras. So it says here you photograph every CCTV camera between his home in East London and Dawson Junction. And that's all I got on that article. It's not even really an article, but Brazil CCTV catches police ignoring murders. Eight officers are arrested after cameras captured a police car driving away after a motorcycle drive by a shooting of two teens. The eight Brazilian officers have been arrested after security camera footage showed two teens being murdered as officers in police cars parked meters away apparently did nothing. Then because the other massive databases aren't enough, it says that uh, here, if you are a nonviolent lover of liberty, you are the embodiment of a domestic terror in the United States, and this is what's become officially the new norm in mainstream media or disinfo. So add this to the 25 reports that can put you on a terror watch list for innocuous activities such as being a martial artist or using cash or basically anything at all, and that is a lot of information that needs to be warehoused and analyzed. So it says big, gov big government of the former republic, known as the United States, has embarked on an initiative called Big Data, a program under the direction of John P. Holdren, Obama's science czar and eugenicist. So, so they said they've seen the major corporations in advertising, social media, defense, contracting, computing from partnerships with government agencies to compile virtual dossiers on all humans. Said apparently more needs to be done, including the NSA's $2 billion installation facility, spy installation facility in Utah, another fusion center. ATF seeks massive database of personal info, including assets, relatives, associates, and more. The system is described as a massive online data repository system. They have all your information, telephone, email. California court upholds ticket for phone GPS use while driving. They likened it to text, uh, texting. But isn't that the funny thing? Is that that's made for tracking. You're supposed to be tracked. You know? you know, the ATF agents ran an undercover uh, scheme using a brain-damaged man with low IQ, set up gun and drug deals, paying him in cigarettes. Called an accident, a four-year-old kills deputy's wife. Basically taking a gun from their bedroom, toddler shoots friend and head in the U.S. state of New Jersey. The boy took the rifle from the house and stabbing spree suspect as a 20-year-old student. Interesting, just like China, right? Thank you.